Hello, I'm Katie and this is episode 5 of Art Snaps. Thank you for joining me or for sticking with me if you're a regular listener. For this Art Snap, I'm going to chat about some pieces from Swindon's collection which have themes or kind of uh, feelings of freshness and renewal. And this is partly because we've just had the bank holiday weekend and Even though the circumstances were less than ideal for lots of us and it was a really strange Easter, we were graced with some really lovely weather. So it got me thinking about artworks in Swindon's collection, which I think represent this time of year really well. And which pieces might help at this difficult time to get us in the spirit of spring and all the colour and renewed energy which comes with it. So I've chosen three pieces to focus on today, which are Spring in Eden by Ivan Hitchens, Landscape by Dennis Worth Miller and The Civil by Cecil Collins. So first of all, let's take a look at a truly lovely piece from Swindon's collection, which is called Spring in Eden, and it was painted by Ivan Hitchens in 1925. And I'd say at first glance it feels like there's quite a lot going on in this painting. So let's start by looking at what's actually there. Essentially what we're seeing is a large still life painting made up of objects found around the artist's studio. And one of the things I noticed when I first saw this work was the sculpture of the torso, which the artist said is a cast of a sculpture by the French artist Alphonse Legros. And here it seems to be placed quite prominently and is actually shown twice since it's reflected in the large mirror to the left. And though there's quite a lot going on in the painting, the artist has created a composition which allows the eye to move quite nicely around the canvas and take in all the elements of the still life. So the torso is placed on a blue table of some kind along with a green vase and that beautiful deep jade is repeated in the fruit bowl toward the middle of the painting. And the yellows and pinks within that bowl are reflected in various objects within the image. And the yellow in particular leads the eye nicely to the daffodils placed in the very foreground of the piece. So there's a really great organic flow which is assisted by unified colour and thick bold outlines throughout the work. And it all comes together to create a fresh, energetic and almost indulgent image of springtime. And there's also a lot of sophistication in this decorative scene. In the background, what initially appears to be a window to a sunny exterior is actually the corner of a large canvas. In fact, the title of Swindon's painting, Spring in Eden, refers to that canvas which was intended as a mural of the Garden of Paradise in the Church of St Luke in Maidstone. So through careful placement of objects, Hitchens manipulates the viewer's perception of space and what could be a cramped studio is transformed, even if only momentarily, into an open and spring-filled paradise. The next two paintings we're going to look at are on show in Swindon Museum and Art Gallery's current exhibition, Pop and Prosperity. So I hope that between episode two on abstract art and this one, you'll feel a little bit less like you've missed out on the exhibition during the gallery's closure. This piece is called Landscape and it was painted by Dennis Worth Miller in 1956. Now it could be argued that Worth Miller is a little bit underappreciated these days and in my opinion his name isn't one that we hear enough particularly since he was so successful and such a well-known character during his lifetime. Certainly he was at the heart of a lively gay bohemian art scene in post-war London and was particularly close to two quite famous characters, one of which was his partner Richard Chopping, who was better known as Dickie, who designed the very cool original dust jackets for eight James Bond novels. And the other was his very close friend Francis Bacon, who is arguably one of the most famous 20th century British painters and a huge celebrity. It's known that Bacon held him in very high regard and they even produced a number of paintings together. But Worth Miller was also a prolific and sought after landscape painter in his own right, who exhibited extensively throughout the 1950s and 60s. His work can even be found in the collection of Her Majesty the Queen. The landscapes are characterised by flat horizon lines and long expressive sweeps of paint and these things are evident in Swindon's landscape where the artist has presented us with a flat sunny landscape which can almost be divided into four strips of colour. 
Through the middle, there's a series of almost subdued shades of green and cream, which could represent either a river or a field. And this is flanked by energetic sweeps of dark paint representing grass or reeds, which is peppered with hints of vibrant red flowers. Then there's the brilliant blue strip of sky, which indicates a clear sunny day. And I chose this piece today because it really reminds me of driving through the countryside with the window down on a warm sunny day, just feeling the fresh breeze against your face. And I know that going for a lovely countryside drive this Easter wasn't really an option, but hopefully Worth Miller's landscape provides a little bit of a sample of what we're missing and maybe just a bit of a relief from, you know, the feeling of being stuck inside and not being able to fully appreciate the lovely weather. The final piece I want to talk about today is The Sybil by Cecil Collins, which was painted in 1964. As I said before, this work is also on show in Pop and Prosperity, and it's an interesting addition to this exhibition of work from the 1960s. Much work produced during this decade was about experimenting with abstraction or focusing on the way visual imagery was transforming advertising and mass consumerism. Um, but what Collins was doing is quite different from a lot of work we see during that time, in that it wasn't commentary of or a celebration of modernity. Collins scorned the increased materialism and consumerism which dominated the post-war era, and this led to a need to explore universal and spiritual truths within his work, to give form to ideas which were much bigger and more meaningful. And he used mythological or recognisable figures to do that. The Sybil presents a graceful female figure who is poised against a glowing sky, high above the earth on a throne of flowers and set upon a temple of trees. And Collins described her as being many things, including a priestess, an oracle and a goddess of spring, concluding that she is not one thing but rather a symbol of the fulfilment of nature. And I think this interesting figure combined with the loose, instinctive brushwork and the vibrant pinks, oranges and blues all come together in an image of great glowing energy. And Collins had a great belief in the purity and spontaneity of the human spirit, which I think really comes through here. And that brings us to the end of this art snap. And I really hope you enjoyed my selection of artworks, which I think represent the freshness and renewal of spring. And if you know any other artworks from our collection or from any other collection which represents spring for you, we'd love it if you could join in the conversation by commenting under this video or on Facebook, Instagram or our blog, uh, which are all listed on the slide here. And if you want to explore more of Swindon's art collection, quite a bit of it is online on artuk.org.uk. Or you can just wait until our next episode when we'll look at some of the artworks which are currently on display in Swindon Civic offices as part of our Art on Tour project. We hope you'll join us then, but for now, be safe and stay well. Thank you for listening.